this observation, but you look like you've lost a ton of weight. I have lost a ton of weight, and we've done it in conjunction with the lightning of most of the architecture that's inside Chrysler. <laughs> I thought I should just, you know, join the team. <laughs> I'm just going to lose some more. We keep on getting lighter and lighter as we get. It's, it's a fuel efficiency issue. Uh, Mr. Marchione, uh, uh, Gino Conte with CBC Radio in Windsor. Uh, I met you before. I yeah. <laughs> um, how important is it to, for you and Chrysler to repay back its the government loans this year? And are you planning a trip to the Windsor Assembly Plant to meet with the workers? It's a lot easier to answer the second question than the first. So yes, I'm going to go to Windsor and meet with it. And I think it's going to happen within this month. So I'll be there and we'll, and we need, I think whenever we launch new products coming out of these plants, we need to be there. I think it's an important recognition of the effort that's gone in here by our colleagues on the shop floor. The first question is, is um, you know, if you're trying to define the perfect Christmas gift for me for 2011, so if you guys want to start collecting money, it would be very helpful to try and get me there. But I'd like to repay back all the government loans that Chrysler has. I'd like to take this, this thing public, and I'd like to, f to, to effectively provide cash into the trust that Viba is running. If I got all those things done, I think we would be absolutely delighted. So it remains a, a big objective for me in 2011. I think we need to see how well the um, products that we've launched here um, perform in the marketplace. I think we need to see traction, and traction is visible in financials. I mean, we'll be able to see in Q1 and Q2 how well we've done. Uh, and on the basis of that, I think we'll make the call as to whether the conditions are right to go public. I, I think that we were encouraged by the GM IPO. Um, I think that they've certainly opened up the markets to the reintroduction of automakers in the United States capital markets. I think it's important. I think Ford's performance Notwithstanding their win um, of truck of the year this morning, I think their performance has been commendable, and I think that um, that you know we're, we're walking into the right environment to get this done. I don't want to lose the window of opportunity of entering the capital markets, and if I can do it in 2011, I'd be delighted. One more quick question: uh, fuel prices. How has that affected your outlook for 2011? Uh, we've seen nothing uh, in, in the movement of fuel prices today that would suggest that there should be a change or an adjustment in terms of our plans for 2011, nor our volume expectations. We, we, we've seen prices rise, um, as all of our competitors have. I, I feel a lot more comfortable because of the work that's gone on here um, on the powertrain side of Chrysler to make sure that we certainly have made the required investments to ensure longevity of the product portfolio inside Chrysler. I mean, the, the, you know, we've introduced at least one, one new transmission family, which will be visible on the Chrysler 300 that we launched today. There's going to be an additional set of transmissions that will be available on the Chrysler 200 and on the Charger as we go forward. In 2013, we'll have um, completely new front-wheel drive transmission. So, I, <clears throat> And the downsizing of engines is continuing. I think we keep on... Um, <clears throat> We keep on working on opportunities to increase the efficiency of combustion, and I have no doubt that by 2013 we'll have one of the most fuel efficient fleets of any of the automotive makers in here in the United States. So I think we need to give some time. I mean, these are longer term projects. The capital associated with these um, and the work that's associated with these um, from an R&D standpoint is usually longer than architectural development because they do last a lot longer than most cars. So these commitments last 20 years. Uh, some of you know that we were up in Kokomo with the president uh, a while back announcement, the investment um, in a new eight-speed transmission that's going down into that plant. Um, there's a nine-speed um, investment that's going to be announced shortly. Um, and so I, we're pretty confident that I think that you know we're making all the right moves. I still believe, notwithstanding all the uh, media noise that we see around electrics that I, we, we need to get a lot better at combustion because uh, if in fact the solution as I believe uh, will be the case is in, is in the perfection of hybrid technology going forward you still need to start with an incredibly fuel efficient gas engine and so this remains our primary objective we're going to try and move that on as quickly as we can we've done good work so far I think it's going to get progressively better as I go through. And I don't think anything is going to happen in terms of fuel prices 
even at these levels, even if they were to go up by another 30 percent for current levels, that would distract us from that objective. Quickly, could you speak about the supplier park? We've had you talk about Toledo North. The supplier park is where they make the Wrangler. Can you make any comments about the Wrangler as it goes forward? I mean, you know, the, the great thing about the Wrangler is that it defined the segment and it will continue to define the segment after I retire. I mean, it is, there's only one Wrangler in the world. I think we continue to perfect the vehicle as we go forward. I, you know, the future of that particular vehicle, especially on the basis of the international expansion that Fiat is willing to assist in with, with Jeep is, is, is assured. And I, you know, uh, we keep on working at that vehicle, making it better. You've seen the new interiors that will launch in the summer of 2010. Uh, you've seen all the work that has now gone on in terms of the hardtop, and we continue to make that car better and better as we go forward. It will receive the new 3.6 liter transmission, uh, 3.6 liter Pentastar engine next year that will allow us to have great transmissions and so on. So I, I, it's a product in development, great future. Um, it has our undivided attention. We understand that it is at the heart of the Jeep brand and nothing will ever touch it. Uh, Pete Langell, uh, AM800 News, Windsor. Yep. Um, you've uh, shown us some great vehicles and we've seen new design and significantly improved interiors. What are you doing in terms of durability and quality? All the things to match the things that you talked about, right? I mean, I think that one of the things that we've undertaken here and I, we've done it quietly, is to effectively rethink the car as we've approached these, these new product introduction and the significant changes that we've made to current to products that were already in the lineup. I think the whole car has been rethought and we've, you know, the, the attention, the quality and the attention that has been placed on a supplier base to ensure that it matched the quality of the vehicles that we were launching has been phenomenal. And I think that to back all that up, I think we've invested an extraordinary amount of money and resources in creating a customer service organization that's designed to rectify what some people may have loosely referred to as sins of the past. So we are trying to transition from um, an unclear past into one that is really anchored on the whole notion of quality and reliability and durability of the vehicles. I, there's nothing on the stand today that I'm embarrassed about, not one. So. If you do find one, let me know. We'll fix it. Thanks very much.